Hi, my name is Alex with Ape Tech Tech Tutorials, and today we're going to be continuing our exploration and journey into Confluent. I'm going to be teaching you how to create a space. I'm going to give you all the information, all the details that you need to know in order to create a space. And if you get any value out of this video, please make sure you hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything that I cover in the video today, let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into Confluence. All right, so creating spaces is actually kind of interesting. It pretty much behaves the same way as Jira when you're making a project, but we're gonna be making a space. And a space is literally just like a Jira project, except you're gonna put information in it in the form of like how-to articles, meeting minutes, basically anything that's like more written form where it's like more documentation e like versus in Jira, it's really more of a project management. It's a task tracker, if you will, right? Jira is really good at trying to figure out who's supposed to do what and when it's due by and when like all that kind of stuff versus Confluence is again, it's more like a Wikipedia. It's more like a place where you come to learn and read and gain some insight about something, right? So it's not so much accountability as much as it is like collaboration and communication. So we are gonna go and create a space. I'm just gonna create, just hit the create button here. And then you are greeted with a couple of different templates. Now, the only difference between all these different templates is that when you are in your space, once you hit the next button and you actually create the space, the left hand side of your space towards the bottom half, there's going to be some predefined links. And depending if you pick knowledge base or documentation or team or, or software, that left hand side is going to become pre-filled with certain options. I don't typically use those options and I just like making my own. And so I almost always just go with a blank space when I'm making a, a brand new space. But I will be showing you just for the purpose of this demo, we're just going to select knowledge base and I'll show you what I'm talking about when we get to the actual space created. So if you click on next, you're going to be asked for a space name and a space key, which if you're a Jira admin, if you've ever created a Jira project, you know, you're asked for a Jira, Jira project name and a Jira key. And so same concept, same thing is happening here where you're going to come in and give it a space name. This is my first demo space. And then you will do the key. Similar behavior. It's taking the, the first letters out of the title and giving you your key. Now, I recommend that you make a space per project, right? So one Confluence space for each Jira project. However, the rules are usually a little bit more lenient on the Confluence side. And you can essentially allow other people or, or create as many spaces as you need, depending on the type of information. Of course, like everything in life, everything in moderation, because there is such a thing as just having too much information in too many different spaces. And so you want to be mindful. You do want to kind of keep it under control, create just the right amount of spaces. But at the end of the day, Confluence's powerful search capabilities kind of makes the whole space thing a lot less worrisome for me because you can pretty much search for anything. Now, the spaces is really just going to be a place like for you to put information and the consideration should be who should have access, right? And depending on who you might want to create a space for like external users versus internal, so on and so forth. But anyways, we're just going to keep on going down this path. You can optionally add a description. And if you're in a paid version of Confluence, which I'm assuming many of you are, you can configure your space permissions by default. Almost anybody with a Confluence user license, which is pretty much everybody that has access to Confluence will like fall under the default permission. So that basically means that your spaces are open to a whole lot of people. We will be making dedicated videos in the future where I talk and walk you through the permissions. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you drop a like in this video so you can be notified when these videos get dropped. But anyways, we're just going to leave the defaults for now. We just gave it a name and a key and I'm going to click on create. So once you hit that button, your space is essentially being created. You'll see this really cool two double gears on the bottom. And here we are on your very first space. And so you can see over here that we have a how to article and a troubleshooting article. And this is the section that I was talking about where depending on that template that we picked for that space, it's going to dictate what shows up over here. Let me show you another example so I can show you what it looks like if I just create maybe a software project space. So I'm going to click next here. You'll see that this is actually trying to connect to a system Jira server. This is where you can really take advantage of. So I'm just going to connect to that one. It's going to automatically make the connection here. And so we just hit create, take the defaults again. And then once this happens, you'll notice that the interface is going to be ever so subtly different. 
So let me hit this create button. You see how things are a little different over here. Right now we have meeting notes, retrospectives, a decision log, file list, and product requirements. And you'll also notice that we have a shortcut back to our Jira. All right, so um, so you can see how it'll link you back to Jira. And so all you got to do is just go back and we will be in our Confluence uh, space that is tied to our Jira project via this shortcut link. And so this is really interesting. And, and obviously the different, um, depending on which template you pick over here, it's going to behave ever so slightly different, right? So I want you to kind of take that into consideration when you're making your spaces that there is there is some meaning, some significance in in those uh, selections that you make. Now, keep in mind that those templates are different than the templates up here. These templates are for the pages. We are going to be doing a deep dive into these templates in a future video as well. But this purpose of this video was just to kind of explain to you how to create the space. Now, I do want to spend a minute here talking about now that we're in a space, well, what am I looking at? And so by default, every single space has this overview section. And this is treat this like a landing page. This is where you're going to come and direct traffic. Folks are going to be coming into your into your space and the overview is the first page that they're going to see. And you want to use this kind of like a navigator. So if you're uh, Confluence is really it's very rich text, like it has a lot of feature rich text that you can like embed icons and links and make this thing as creative as you want. And so this is a good place for you to like make like a landing page for folks to know who your team is. Here's the roadmap. Here's like common Jira issues that we're looking at. Right. So it's a very good place for people to just come and get some very, very needed, useful information up front without going too deep. Because if you're not careful in Confluence, you can go 20, 30 pages deep in this thing and it can get tricky to find information. Fortunately, we have that powerful search, which we are going to be doing a future video on and it'll help you find stuff. But just know that this landing, this overview landing page is really, really beneficial. We also have a blog. The blog basically allows your team to uh, essentially create short form articles that are maybe not as formal as like a proper how to, but just sharing communication. I had never really used a blog before, but it's really easy to just click the plus sign and just start writing and sharing information with your team. Down here though, under pages, this is where the magic happens. This is where you're organizing your information. And so it's really easy to basically, if you click this plus button up here at the page level, it'll create like a, a, like a highest hierarchy page. And then if you go to any of these highest hierarchy pages, you can click on this little plus sign and start making child pages underneath. We are going to be doing dedicated videos where I talk about pages. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you're tuned in for that. Um, but I just wanted to give you a very quick overview of like, this is how you make a space. And this is kind of what's in your space. Um, in future videos, we're going to be basically going into a little bit more of the details as to like, okay, so now that I have a space, now what, what do I do with it? Right. <laughs> and so make sure you're subscribed. We'll, uh, we'll be back next week with some additional videos for you. All right. Thank you. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.